Hello everybody and welcome back to the workbench where we are having another look at the K's LB and SCR K class. As you can see the tender is coming along quite nicely. It is looking rather complete now. It rolls brilliantly on the track. It has been modified with sprung buffers and as you can probably tell from the title of the video we will today be adding scale couplings to it so we do have sat here in front of us all the parts for a smith's lp8 screw link coupling and we will be looking at how they go together and we also have here taken from a rather large kit of these that i've got some of the plates that go at the go on the buffer beam for the coupling to attach to so one of these will sit over this hole here giving us not only a more realistic looking buffer beam but this hole that comes on the kit as standard is way too big for the Smiths couplings and they can almost fall all the way through so we do want to try and avoid that so these have the hole the right size they will allow us to avoid that and it also allows me to show you how we will be how we solder brass and white metal together if it was as simple as just soldering with white metal solder then we would always use white metal solder because you know if, if it was because you know it would make soldering so much easier being able to solder at a low temperature however that is not how it works so yes, we're going to look at these things and we're going to, so this will be the tender built, see before painting the buffers, or the buffer heads at least, and the couplings will be coming back out, but, you know, this will be the tender fully constructed, and as I hope you can see here, I've filled the corners, this is the one that we soldered on last week's video as I've filled that corner and filed it round and I have done that with some solder and once paint I mean you can see the edges of the solder and everything now but it is actually smooth it's just reflecting you know it's a slightly different color and it's reflecting differently in the light so you can see it but once it's painted that'll be completely hidden and give us a nice shape to the corner that we want so everything is going well on that front so I am going to flick the soldering iron on and turn it up to a higher temperature for soldering just with the brass alone to start with. And whilst I do that, let's have a look at this coupling. So what we have here, I'll get my big backing sheet that allows me to do nice close-ups and maintain focus. Thank you for proving my point there, camera. Coupling hook. It has a shoulder on it. You can see the shoulder on it, even though it's not focusing quite as well as I would like. Where's that gone? Oh, good. Remember, people, don't drop things. I make these mistakes, so you don't have to. Luckily, I have quite a few of these. So, oh, no, I found it. Never mind. So yes, we have our hook, it has a shoulder on it, it has a hole through it, there we go, and then it has the actual hook. So we cut, construct the screw links which go through this hole and dangle down. See the hook is for the coupling of the next vehicle to attach to, 
and then all this back here goes through the through the buffer beam and has a spring and then a split pin to hold it all in place nice and simple so how do we do that you ask we well the next thing we have is our links these are a bit too small for me to hold and you see so let's bring the card back so the link which because it's not focusing looks a bit like a dumbbell to you is a thin bit of brass on each end is a loop which allows it to hook onto the center screw bit I don't actually know the proper names for these, you can probably tell. Let's get that between them properly. Which has bits that stick out, as you can see, two on the top, two on the bottom there. The holes in the links either side loop onto them, and the hole through the middle of it actually gets a track pin poked through which is then cut down and squeezed at the end to flatten it out so that it doesn't fall out and that represents our screw oh and there is the soldering iron heated up that was nice and quick of it wasn't it so we're going to take our two nice bits of brass, which oh, we don't want to be breaking them. I've had to extend the holes on these because, again, these ones aren't designed for Smith's couplings. And they are, the holes on them were a little bit small. Oh, there it goes, it's broke. That's okay, it's not the end of the world that it's broke. I can repair that. So I'm just going to take them down onto the actual the actual workbench where it is still made of wood rather than my glass sheet and just put the knife through to separate them I shall do the front one on the loco the broken one on the loco and this one will go on the tender I'm going to try and cut this bit of a sprue off there we go so that is now how we want it I'm just going to press it down on here my track pin hammer to make sure it's nice and smooth and then it can go back on the soldering block it is face down at the moment it does have rivets on the outside No, it doesn't want to focus, does it? You'll have to take my word on it having rivets on the outside. Just one in each corner. So I'm just going to put that face down. I've noticed it's rather more tarnished than I'd like. I did actually polish these up earlier, but I've been held up from making the video. The cleaner the better when it comes to soldering. So I'll just apply some flux all over the back of that
and then some regular solder that I use for all my brass that got way too much on it there it's come off and now it's stuck there's the ceramic ones I can hold it with these because I know they won't get hot and then I can get my solder pump and we will remove a bit of the solder That's better. So we're going to clean off the tip there and turn the iron back down ready for soldering to the white metal. So there now we have the plate soldered together. Uh, sorry, not soldered together, just tinned ready for solder into the white metal whilst we wait for the iron to cool down we're going to take one of these we're going to hold it around a nice thin screwdriver and we're just going to bend it round so that the holes line up with each other We are then going to grab the centre screw slot it in place and just squeeze just with our fingers to bend the last little bit so that these are now attached the iron still hasn't quite cooled down so we'll keep dropping this obviously bend it round and then this one goes through the hole on the coupling hook and then it's exactly the same procedure and there we have the coupling dangling down we just need to add the track pin Now these track pins do come with the couplings, so we shall cut it down to a more sensible size, which can interfere with it fitting through the hole sometimes, I won't lie, but it is still easier to do it that way than it is to do it afterwards. That has slid straight through the hole. So I will bring my, my clamp over, as this is what I use to do this bit. I just open it up, get the end of the pin in, and close it. as tight as I can and that has squeezed the end of the pin flat so that's now not going to fall out that is our coupling built nice and simple
So Smiths also do a style of coupling where you don't have the pin and it's all etched together as one piece so you just it has a bit that sticks off the side of the center link that you just bend round and obviously that works just as well it's all a preference thing i can't remember the model number of that one i have used both and you know some of my locos have one some have an up have the other So next we are going to apply a small bit of flux to the buffer beam. And then we are going to get our white metal solder. And just apply that on the back of the buffer beam. where our plate is going to go. So if I just grab my blue tack so we can stand this up. Oh, has that hole filled? No, that's just excess flux, that's okay. I thought that hole had filled up with solder for a minute there. So we're just going to apply the plate over the hole. And to hold it down with my ceramic tweezers because I know they won't heat up and burn my hands. And now the white metal solder will just be remelted to hold that in place and there we have it fitted to the back of the tender now as long as we've not obviously we put too much solder on earlier so hopefully we haven't filled the hole in too much and this can just slide through it is a bit tight so we obviously have filled it a bit but that's okay, we can just use the knife here to clear it out a little. And there, our coupling hook now sits through quite nicely. So all that is left to do, we're going to use the blue tack to hold it at an angle again. We could really use with some more light in there. I'm sure, let's see if we can. There we go. I'll put it round that way.
so we just need to get the spring onto the hook. I realise my fingers will now be in the way. So that's turning it that way wasn't as helpful as I'd have liked. But the spring is now over the tail end of the hook. We need to compress the spring down. These have gone rather out of alignment, that's not helpful. Let's use these ones. And then we just need to slide the split pin through the hole. And there is our coupling fitted. And so that is the tender built. Just like that. So Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you have found this video helpful. Please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.